Yes, you can. Respected speaker for today's webinar, respected secretary, sir, of the college council, respected principal, ma'am, respected vice principal, sir, dear senior teachers, colleagues, other <coughs> dignitaries and guests, my dear students, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Scottish Church College, I would like to welcome you by saying a very good evening to you all. As we all know that the educational institutions are about to resume their classes on campus very soon. Classrooms will be once again lit up with bright faces and noises of the rubbing dusters on the board. It truly feels like returning home, returning to our matters after spending a very long and treacherous exile. But honestly, there are something more to it rather than just a euphoric feeling. There are many random thoughts currently flying in our minds, which are mostly xenophobic, full of doubts, worries, and concerns about the impact it may have on all of us, students, teachers, staff members, and largely the whole education system. Hence, in this transitory phase, from new normal to old normal, we all have to play our part as important stakeholders of this integrated system. Scottish Church College has always been the torchbearer in innovative practices as far as health and safety of its members are concerned. Therefore, we are holding this special webinar today on orientation program on COVID-19. May I now please invite our respected principal ma'am, Dr. Madhumanjali Mandol, to kindly deliver her welcome address. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Pidaki. Good evening, everyone. Dr. Partha Sharati Bhattacharya, Secretary, Institute of Palmo Care and Research, Kolkata. Dr. Shapun Mukuti, Secretary, Governing Council of Scottish Church College. Dr. Shupratim Das, Vice Principal. Dr. Rajasri Ghosh, Barsar. Dr. Shamrat Bhattacharji, IQAC Coordinator, Dr. Bidisha Sinha, Senator so Secretary, Dr. Naran Chandra Das, Teachers Council Secretary, my respected colleagues, support staff, and my beloved students. On behalf of Scottish Church College, I welcome you all in this orientation program. We all know that after 17 months of break, we will be coming to our institution on regular basis from 16th November, 2021. But this rejoining of our offline, oh, offline duties will be a real challenge to all of us. We will have to follow certain do's and don'ts, which will help us to be safe in this present pandemic scenario. To know these hygienic rules and regulations, today we have invited Dr. Patho Sharati Bhattacharya, who is an expert in the field of pulmonary medicine. It is my pleasure to welcome you, sir, in the Scottish Church family. I'm really indebted to you that in spite of your very busy schedule, you could manage your time to join us today, to share your views and to guide us in a right direction. I hope this session will enrich all of us and help us to take very cautious steps while we will be in the college campus. In this regard, our college COVID-19 cell has also prepared an advisory which will be uploaded on our website shortly. Thank you all. Again, I convey my best regards to our speaker today. May God bless us all. Thank you, Principal Ma'am, for bringing 
her concern regarding this uh, recent challenges and the challenges which we are about to experience uh, which we are about to experience and now it is uh, and, and she has rightly set the tone for the rest of the webinar and now i would be requesting our uh, respected uh, secretary college council dr shopon uh, kumar mukuti sir to kindly introduce our speaker for today's webinar over to you sir Sir, you are muted. Uh, respected Dr. Bhatta Sharki Bhatta Charya and our respected principals and all other uh, dignitaries who have joined this seminar. It's my great pleasure on a personal level and an honor for the Scottish Church College to have Dr. Patasharki Bhattacharya, a legendary pulmonologist of great repute and patient friendly to this webinar for students. Dr. Bhattacharya has degree of MD, DNB, and DM in pulmonary medicine. And also he has wide range of research in his field of expertise, that is pulmonology. Briefly, pulmonology is relating to chest mainly, or chest related diseases such as asthma, tuberculosis, COPD, and many such other uh, areas. He attended several seminars of national and international level. And in many of such seminars, he was the invited speaker. He has national and international acceptance as a distinguished pulmonologist. Another notable achievement of Dr. Bhattacharya that he has established a research institute in the name of Institute of Pulmocare and Research, in short, IPCR which has its own building set up in Newtown, where researches are being carried out by junior doctors under the leadership of Dr. Bhattacharya in collaboration with uh, institutions like IIT Kharagpur and some pharmaceutical companies. Uh, I know about one such uh, association with or uh, collaboration with IIT Kharagpur that uh, he was trying to develop the stethoscope with technology from IIT Kharagpur so that the, the sound of the stethoscope can be analyzed to detect the correct disease and its ramifications. So in this way, he has got many ideas uh, in his research mind and all the time he is thinking about developing research through junior doctors in, uh, under the IPCR. I am, I am, I am also grateful for Please announce. May I request host to kindly mute everyone except sir. Sushoban, if you can hear me. Yes, I'm hearing, but I cannot find out. Oh. Mute everyone and then sir can unmute. Uh, yeah. Sir, you, you just un unmute yourself. Sir, so you may carry on, please. So, uh, I personally uh, is very indebted to him for uh, different medical advice and also grateful that he has uh, made me associated with 
this Institute of Palmo Care and Research uh, in the Ethics Committee, though I am not a medical person. I believe this lecture will be interesting and enriching for the students in the backdrop of COVID-19 awareness, which the government desires that every student should be aware uh, about the consequences of COVID-19 and what preparation they should uh, have while attending the classes. With these words, I invite Dr. Partha Sharati Bhattacharya to begin his talk. But before he begins, I just ask the students and all other participants not to ask any question in the midst of the lecture, but they can place their question in the chat box so that the question can be taken up later on. So Pilaki can uh, make note of the questions in the chat box so that we can have a smooth run of the lecture. Thank you, Dr. Bhattacharya. Thank, thank, thank you, you very much. For, yeah, thank you, sir, for the tall introduction. And uh, especially with your personal note, I am equally grateful to you for guiding me in not many situations. And um, I am grateful to the organizing members of today meeting, including the principal, madam, and the other faculty members of Scottish Church College to give me this opportunity. In fact, I do not know what to talk. I am I am prepared anything myself, especially. But I think it's very important to understand um, that for COVID or for any disease, for any population, for any group of people, the most important issue is intense desire to remain safe, to help others, and above all, common sense. So what I'll start is basically with the common sense issue. See, COVID is something which has been, uh, it's a novel virus, it's a new menace, and the humanity was not prepared for it. So it came like bolt from the blue. And the virus is so infectious that it can spread like wildfire and affect uh, hundreds and thousands and lakhs and millions like that. We have, you know, I, I won't quote figures, but you know how many millions of people have died already across the globe. So in this pandemic, <clears throat> which has created a havoc, and if you talk to people, hardly you will find anybody who has not come across COVID-affected relatives or friends um, in his lifetime. I find every day, almost every day, some one, two, or even more people um, painfully depicting the menace of COVID in their personal life. Someone has helped, lost their near and dear ones. Someone have got crippling effect aftermath of COVID and uh, so on and so forth. So the impact of COVID is huge and it is uh, still the society is reeling under it and is trying to come out. And it is not that the story is over. I, I would say that this information is very important to keep in your sense. COVID is a new virus. COVID is a new virus. And a lot of it is not known yet. COVID mutates. The virus mutates very frequently, very quickly. And there are a large number of mutant virus. Each mutant virus is different from the host original virus. So what happens? Each time a mutant virus arrives, it can cause disease, the same disease called COVID-19, but the signs, symptoms, severity, everything may be different. We have seen in first phase of COVID, it was severe, uh, but the second phase was disastrous. Now we are possibly going through third phase because my call meter in my telephone is the marker of social prevalence of COVID in the society. So I get number of calls when people get COVID um, uh, infection and the RT-PCR is positive. During the second surge, my calls were mostly, I mean, all panicky calls, a request to manage a bed, a request to manage a doctor, request what to do, what not to do. I had really made, you know, um, a message on my WhatsApp and a message in my chat box so that I could send it. I used to send a lot of message to a lot of people. Just trying to help them from my home, those who are asking for help. 
this time nowadays we find calls much less frequently but it is there and of late it has increased a little so it suggests that the covid is now come back again and i do not know which phase is called to be called third phase which has to be fourth phase unless it becomes severe people do not give much importance to it but potentially covid remains a severe disease i do not know you may be all students of uh, <clears throat> science may not be students of biology so so this virus as you understand is a very tiny existence it has got its own you know genetic system within itself and it gets into the body it replicates in the cells of the body and it comes out of the body comes out of the cell and spreads to another cells so it's like if you have got a hammer and you have just broken one brick and imagine another hammer has erupted out from that broken brick and started breaking other bricks so that within moments you find plenty of hammers and breaking the bricks and so that the, all the bricks have been broken in a very short while it's like an explosion covid is kind of that and the body reacts to it very differently in different persons the severity of the covid the symptom complex they all are dependent on how your body reacts to it and the body has got several systems it's like a you can compare it to a motor car as it has got body it has got engine it has got clutch brake it has got a lot of other parts similarly body has got lot lot of parts like our brain is one part of the body so in covid there are some neurological problems if one doesn't find smell or doesn't get taste or taste something a little different or smell something you know malodorous so that's a kind of perversion of the taste and smell it is like a neuro inflammatory syndrome which means that his neural system or nervous system is affected patients may have lot of other symptoms they may have stroke they may have headache they may have seizure lot more things similarly every system is affected in lungs also there are multiple types of involvement in heart also there are involvement there are gut involvement so you cannot ignore any symptom in the covid period if there was a time in the second phase when for any damn cd symptom we used to ask go for covid test and uh, i mean surprisingly in lot many of these patients <clears throat> the rt pcr came positive and we gradually learned that covid can cause whole lot of things the first phase our idea was that it is predominantly pneumonia or predominantly respiratory involvement with the respiratory affections progressions failure then we came to know it is uh, also a problem of the blood vessels in the in the lungs they get clogged and the lungs do not um, uh, oxygenate the blood properly so the patient has got respiratory failure and gradually gradually learned that a lot of other systems are affected a simple diarrhea can be a sign of covid hair fall can be a sign of covid patients can have memory loss in covid patients may have skin changes lot of eruptions new eruptions and those we have seen we have diagnosed and we have learned and we are still learning how covid comes so let me come back to my uh, common sense issue so this virus is unique and this virus affects the human being being inhaled predominantly through the nose or through mouth or it can go directly to the conjunctiva the eyes the mucous membrane where through it penetrates into the body and how does it penetrate because it gets suspended in the air once we talk a lot of small small particles come out from my mouth and these particles they contain a little bit of water or watery substances lot of solvents and lot of solutes lot of things been together suspended in the air and just like fog just like a mist and these mist travel a distance from my mouth before it settles down to floor or any surface it was initially thought and told in covid that 3 feet distance is good enough but we read in our textbooks early in our student life that for tuberculosis it is also a airborne infection the infection can travel a long distance maybe 10 feet or so so then we came to know the no no is 3 feet is not enough it is 6 feet then there were a lot of social media hue and cry that covid virus can you know float in uh, air it can go to from one place to another place it may traverse a bigger distance whatever it is the 
distance is an issue. So once you are gathering again, you never know that that you may be exposed to a patient who is spreading COVID virus. So this distance to be kept in mind. Please, for God's sake, shun your old habits of hugging friends. Handshake is abundant and it should be abundant for good, at least for some years. Till we know that it, it is safe. These are very small things. And the best way is to fold hands and do namaskar and say, hi, how are you? I think that's the best way to greet your friends. Second, once you come down to your college, there is every chance. I mean, I, I, I say that in an ideal situation is one and the practical life is different. I call it real life. If you come to my institute or if you come to a place where some COVID norms have been followed, then you feel that, well, we are protected. But we do not take into account uh, how the patient or how the person has come all along from his home to my place. He might have traveled by a local train or by a bus, or he might have hired a taxi or a private car to come, or he, have, or he has come by his own car. So in any place where there is a, there is a crowded, uh, there is chance of crowding, there is higher risk of spread of COVID. And you know that some people are super spreaders. So you never know where you are. So the most important, another most important thing is to save yourself. So what advice I can give you that even the COVID prevalence is low, you try those who have got spectacles fine or you can have a zero power spectacles, it protects a little. And second is that please put on your mask all the time you are in crowd or in association with unknown people or even known people. So this is one way you protect yourself. Mask is what that will protect you from aerosols to be inhaled and that will protect others if you are an infected person uh, to get COVID from you. There are a lot of questions about mask. You must be knowing all of them because there have been a lot of discussion in social media, newspaper and everywhere. But what I find today that a single mask has been put on by people for days together. And once the patients come to me, I can see patients, I do not see students. I find that the, the mask is partially torn. It has turned, you know, dirty. At a look, you can understand this is not cleaned. And uh, these surgical masks, they should not be cleaned. You know, they should be discarded. Even this uh, N95 mask, they should also be discarded. Only the, only the masks, those who are being made of clothes, they can be washed every day. Some people are washing the N95 mask, using it, reusing it, reusing it. I say it's all right, but as long as you clear it. See, mask has two surfaces. One surface is covering your face and nose. Many a times nose is not covered, but keep in mind that you have to cover the nose and you, will, you, must, you must insist that the person in front of you should cover the nose. So, so nose and mouth should be covered. And that surface, which is covering the nose and mouth, that should be the, that is a naturally infected surface from you. And the outer surface is naturally infected surface from others. So what I do every day, so it is not possible even being a doctor to get a new mask every time. So what I do that I, once I return home, I spray this mask both the sides with 75% alcohol spray and keep it hanging for some time. I know it is getting sterile. I think that is, it could be uh, maybe you know, a lot of controversy. The ideal way of sterilizing mask is different. The methods have been given, but those methods are theoretical. It's not possible to follow. So that's one thing that every day after you return, you must clean your mask or sterilize or disinfect your mask and keep it for future use. Second, that once you return from home or you come from home to your college, in both the places you have a responsibility. In the college, your responsibility that you shouldn't spread infection and you shouldn't get infection. In the home, your responsibility is that you shouldn't spread infection if you're carrying it from outside. So what I say every day to every patient that once you return home, try to go to your bathroom as fast as possible. Put your clothes in a bucket in soap water and go and take a bath with soap, use shampoo, and, and then you come back and mingle with others. From surface, from fomites, from surface to human spread is much less, but from human to human, from aerosol spread is much more common. Despite all this, there may be a chance of catching COVID. 
so you have to strengthen your body strengthen your immunity and you know everything that strengthening can be done best with covid vaccines a lot of people have taken vaccine single double vaccines and no vaccine is 100% safe or 100% <clears throat> efficacy efficient to prevent covid like our covaxin it is told it is uh, 80% effective like uh, covid shield it is 71 72% effective so there is a chance that 30% you are not immunized or you don't get immunity despite you are being vaccinated and even you are vaccinated there are theories that covid virus can break that system and it can infect you the most important thing is the nature of the virus the mutation of the virus it actually makes a lot of difference and that actually makes covid virus sometimes very strong strongly infective and very strongly virulent so bacterial virulence a viral virulence your body immunity they play an interplay your immunity will be poor if you have a disease you are malnourished if you do not sleep properly if you do not eat right food if <clears throat> if you have some medicines or if you have some addictions like smoke are super high risk so don't smoke alcoholism is not good it will kill your immunity don't lose then if you have a disease like say there are a lot of conditions where we have to give treatment that actually reduces or kills the body's immunity so they are called immunosuppressants steroid is something so if you are on such treatment you must be asking your doctor for any protracted treatment or long long continued treatment that should i should i be uh, cautious about my immunity should i be taking extra precautions so these are the things uh, you should take care of and <clears throat> you must have a very healthy habit to so say healthy habit i mean that what i mean and i speak that and what i speak is very simple that we are basically creatures like any other and only speciality is that we have got a little developed brain and we can think a little more we can have some more faculties that are given to us uh that is basically judgment and certain different emotions but don't think that animals don't have those emotions but they have we do not know much about it our cortex is much bigger and much much thicker and we have our neurons are different and different much higher in number uh we are thinking animal and we have decided to drift away from nature right if you see the animal kingdom everybody gets out of its home or place of residence in the morning like birds they leave their nest they go for food they come back by evening they have got a circadian rhythm which moves through the nature cycle you won't find a bird who is uh, moving around in the daytime like sparrows uh, flying in uh, night hours but there are some birds they fly in night only so there is a particular cycle for us for human being so our life cycle our biological clock should be set as close as a set as a clock of the nature but we are just different like myself i go to bed by 1 pm 1 am in the morning maybe even later which is bad but i cannot help so for students i would say that please try to have a habit to get up early in the morning go to bed a little early and you know the early morning retention mental retention of facts knowledge everything is far better your performance will be far better you will be able to learn better if you get up early in the morning second is biologically biologically if through evolution we are more a vegetarian because if you see you don't have canine teeth that the dogs have our gut is not small it's a long gut like cows and you know herbivorous animals uh, a tiger has got a very small gut some 10 12 feet at most dogs have got a very small gut length but our gut length is quite long it suggests that we are basically herbivores we are supposed to eat herbs but if you see the habit food habit we are just the reverse i don't mind to take um, non veg food but the thing is if you if you just when you imagine how much we have drifted from nature that we boil food we cook food and we hyper cook it sometimes it make it as poisonous the cooking has been done so much 
it is just for our pleasure of the taste buds. Our tongue is one organ which gives us some pleasure. All the organs are there to give us pleasure. And we are always asking and looking for pleasure. And for sake of pleasure, we make our food a poison. And that is dangerous. Food outside home is not good food. Food outside home is not cooked most of the time, hygienically. Food outside home, to my mind, may be mixed with second grade spices. There may be adulterated spices. Some, some spices or something may be given. I do not know what is that. But I find people sweating once they eat outside. And I, I, I just imagine that uh, if I have access to, you know, make research, I will do. Why they are sweating? Why I don't sweat when, once I eat? And why these people, while taking biryani, are sweating? Sweating means a sign of sympathetic overactivity. This pulse set must be higher at that point of time. So that food must be containing something which stimulates its sympathetic nervous system. We have got a nervous system which is autonomic, means that your heart is beating, your gut is moving, and that your lungs are expanding and contracting. Yeah, unawares, you do not know. And there is a rhythm of it. It goes continuously uh, uh, with you know, rhythm. And that has also been controlled by your nervous system. That is called autonomic nervous system. It has got two parts. One is sympathetic, another is parasympathetic. They are very, very important. If you're frightened, your sympathetic system is you know, triggered. Your pulse rate is go high, will go high, your eye will turn weak. Uh, it will be excited. It's a sympathetic nervous system. So there is a sympathetic surge. What I find once people are eating biryani, anyway, I'm just shifting from the topic. What I mean to say, they try to have natural food. A lot of vegetables, a lot of fruits, and a lot of cereals and whatever available in your locality or in your place. Nowadays, it's been a fashion everywhere to take you know, fast food, so-called, like pizza. It's good, nice to eat, but it is not our food. If you see everything, the food, the culture, the dress, the lifestyle, in every sense, it has developed over hundreds of years through different experiments. Those experiments are not noted. They have not been published in peer-reviewed journals, but those experiments have been noticed, observed by very wise people. And they have, they have given some formulae for us to lead a life. And the food habit has developed accordingly. If you go to a desert country like uh, Middle East, I think God has provided uh, all vitamins, minerals, everything in dates. If you go to, say, Greenland, nowadays Greenland is a uh, different Greenland, but in our childhood days, we had a picture of Iglu and uh, we used to learn and read that they live in the ice and the only food is the seal, the fish. And they used to take the fad that the fad is used to light their house within the Iglu. There is a small lamp which is burning the foil, the fat of those fishes. And actually, that fat, it contains all vitamins. In, say, a place like Bengal, uh, we are very, you know, we are fortunate, we are blessed, because God has provided so many kinds of fruits, so many kinds of vegetables. Look at so many varieties. And leaving them, if we, if we stick to one particular kind of food, that is unfair. Hello? Actually, actually that, is, that is a dangerous habit. That kills your immunity. I'm not going to give lecture on food, but I want to mean that if you are on such kind of diet, it is certain that you are you are going to have a suppressed immunity or a perturbed immunity. And your perturbed immunity can lead to diseases. I do not know, but sometimes I find that there is a relationship of food habit with tuberculosis. For no reason, people or kids from uh, affluent families, they get a kind of tuberculosis or infection of um, the tuberculosis family, we call it NTM infections. What I'm talking, I know it is recorded, but what I'm talking is my experience, is my observations. Because we haven't recorded everything in the, under the sun, because there are a lot of unknown things, and because observation matters, because today's observation will be, tomorrow, will be recorded tomorrow. And every observation, if it is honest, it has got a value. So what, I, what, I, what I'm talking is, is truth. What I find is that kids from the affluent families, they've got it. They develop NTM infections. And why it is so? 
because I'm sure there is a part of immunity. So I would request my junior youngsters, the students, uh, please keep this in mind. I know there are situations that you cannot have the right choice. You may have to take fast food, you may have to take something which you may not like or which may not be right kind of food for your health, but try to be as traditional as possible in your food habit. I think the tradition is a science. So we must respect the traditions. We are, for every place, if you move from Kolkata to Delhi, you find the nature of the people change. If you go to Delhi, I find they are a little more aggressive than Bengalis. So I do not know why, but there is a reason for it. Uh, they react faster, they get angry quickly. But maybe that we are in a little quiet place, a lot of rainfall, a lot, lot more vegetables. They may have to do something. It's a matter of research, it's an issue for research. So what I mean to say, you take food, whatever you get, try to be traditional and try to maintain a biological clock, your biological clock as close as possible to the nature's biological clock. Night is meant for sleep. Sleep is not a waste of time. Sleep is actually utilizing time. The good sleep will make you work better in the awake period. If you have a good sleep, your mental faculty will act far, far better. Your, you know, registrations, your perceptions, your memory will be strong and you can do far better. So good sleep is essential. I have found people, they're sleeping less uh, in the name of, you know, exam preparations. Actually, you are killing yourself. That also kills your immunity. Sleep is a time when your body recovers. The whole day we are going through stress and strains. And during sleep, we recover. If your recovery is not correct, and if that goes on and on and on for days after days after days, then what will happen? You'll be sick. A bit of deficient recovery, if accumulated together every day, after a month, it will be, say, 1% will be 30%. <clears throat> so you can imagine, sleep is important for immunity. So you be, be sleeping nicely, comfortably, and before sleep, don't get anything exciting, stimulating your brain. So your sleep will be disturbed. So watching a horror movie or watching something in the TV that disturbs your mind is not good for health and not good for immunity. So these are common senses. Uh, so follow up, follow these common senses in your daily life. Once you come to your college, let me come back to your college. Once you come to your college, I know it may not be ideal all the time to keep a distance with your uh, friend of three feet and just you are showing that there are circles, you stand there or you have got a chair, you have to sit in one person in one chair, I mean one uh, bench, another person at a five feet distance. It may not be possible all the time. In fact, human nature has got, got, got a kind of you know, a tendency uh, to, to break these things and uh, come closer. A natural tendency of people to come closer, you know, turn uh, more intimate and uh, discuss, talk, or do something. So it happens unawares, but keep aware that if you've got the slightest sign of any ailment in your body, be it with you or be it with your friend, be very careful. If somebody is sneezing, okay, just try to keep him a little bit distant from you. And it is individual responsibility. I do not know. I might be sneezing just one hour after this talk. Or I tomorrow morning, I might be sneezing. Maybe it may be a simple allergic you know, uh, sneeze. But uh, it may be a sign of COVID as well. So the first job is that be, be cautious. If you have any symptoms or if you've got anything, try to isolate yourself. If I can see 368 people are listening, if 368 of you understands that it is my responsibility to put a mask on when I'm in the college, it is my responsibility to see that my nose is closed. And if a doctor can keep a mask whole day on his face, closing the nose and the face, why can't I? I have to, I can. If you think that way, you can. I know it is very uncomfortable. Once you are outside, once you're in a free space, there is no crowd in front or around you, you can just open the mask and take natural air 
But once you are in the crowd, you have to have a mask. That is first. Second, if you've got a, one of the slightest symptoms, be it a little diarrhea, be it a little sneezing, a little throat pain, that's very important, be it a little throat pain, cough, a little bit of fever, uneasiness, myalgia, body aches. So be cautious. And tell your friends, I'm not feeling well, so stay away. There's nothing wrong in it. You are not, you won't be untouchable. So behave that way, everyone. So, and keep a bench. I would uh, request the college authority to keep a small area, one bench, or a one particular place in the class where if a person feels a little uneasy, he can go and sit. And the rest of the people can understand, well, that is the place here marked for those who are feeling unwell. And, and if that uh, um, uh, feeling continues, get yourself tested for COVID. I know a gentleman who has tested himself 10 times. And only yesterday, day before yesterday, he had a fever. So he called me that I have a fever and I have a throat pain. I said, go and test for COVID yourself. Please don't ask it. I have tested it 10 times. Every time I have got anything small, my wife and you, both of you are dangerous. You push me to you send me to the test and every time it is negative, this is going to be negative. I'm not going to do it. I said, you do it. And if you do not do it, don't call me back. So somehow he went and uh, yesterday he came positive. It's the 11th time the test is positive. See, one test may not be positive also. It is not a 100% sensitive, 100% specific test. So what happens? Roughly 25, 30% patients, the test can be negative. This is a false negative test but the patient is symptomatic. We find a lot of patients where we test the patient, the CT scan, the other things, they fit perfectly with COVID, but repeated test is negative. So maybe there is something in a peculiar to a particular group of people in whom the test turns negative, or maybe there is some peculiarity or some deficiency of a particular batch of tests or particular kind of test that cannot pick up a certain group of patients' COVID positivity. So there are a lot of things. If you look at literature, it's an inundation. Any medical journal on COVID, 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 COVID. And everybody is publishing COVID. Everybody is trying to add to you know, the knowledge. Once the COVID erupted, I know a lot of calls. I, a lot of friends called me. We had a lot of interactions, so brainstorming. And I found it's very interesting that everyone tries to find out something. So what a wonderful human instinct that you try to try to help your fellow people, whichever way you can. So that I found in the time of pandemic. And then I found, I found this number is not small. If I open the TV and find people are not following the COVID norm, they're going to market without mask and making crowd and uh, gossiping. That used to pain us a lot. But at the same time, I found a lot of phone calls, a lot of people were genuinely trying to find out something despite their limitations, despite they have got no logistics. They're not, especially the scientist community, I would say. I mean, I was very, very impressed by people who were, even retired people, they were asking, doctor, what can we do? Can, they have got certain hypotheses, a lot of hypotheses they expressed to me. Uh, I couldn't understand many of them. And there was a plethora of, plethora of thoughts and hypotheses. And I wished I could have a system to you know, make an archive of these thoughts. Unfortunately, we don't have. We have got a lot of things in our country. We don't think, I mean, this way for science and technology, we don't think. We don't uh, bother to reward the thoughts, you know, good thoughts, the scientific attitude, aptitude. In fact, they're the most neglected area. People speak very high, loud uh, on education, poverty, but how can you eradicate poverty? Nobody speaks about it. Our quality is quite silent. Because if you speak about scientific community, you are talking for a minority of a minority. And they are not a vote bank. They cannot be a vote bank. But if that uh, minuscule fragment is nurtured properly, they can help the majority. And they will change. They can bring the change. That kind of understanding is lacking in our polity. So that has to come. Anyway, that's a different issue. So what I mean to say that you try to isolate yourself if you have any symptom after joining your college. 
and that is not a matter of shame or matter of anything you say frankly that i am sick if you feel sick if you feel low grade fever sneezing you may have an important class you may miss a class you may have a problem with attendance but i'm sure your authority will understand if you give a certificate of your doctor that you had a problem so don't force yourself we used to force ourselves in our student days if you had a good class or a dissection session where the presence was important so despite being sick we used to go it has happened to many of my friends a lot of us almost all of us so that kind of attitude is there in every student's mind so please restrain yourself if you are sick you are not well don't go to college get yourself checked tested and i can say if you got a sneezing or a throat pain if it subsides in a day or so or with a antihistaminic tablet or simple treatment in a, in a, in hours if it's a allergic it will settle in hours it is not covid but if it doesn't settle that way if it lingers test yourself and consult a doctor and then decide to go or not to go i know the covid test it uh, costs quite a few hundred rupees i do not know what exactly the price maybe 1000 plus but uh, i there are still uh, government institutes which are doing covid test so try to search it out find it out get yourself tested and don't take it lightly because you don't see very sick patients you don't find newspaper crying with a covid death or you don't find the tv showing you know dead bodies wrapped in plastic or been taken away so that kind of panic is not there but it is uh, but don't say don't feel safe and don't feel happy that now they everything is over um you know in my you know whatsapp group i find a lot of very recent covid deaths and uh, only deaths come up earlier it used to come in hundreds and thousands now it is much num- less number thanks to um our covid vaccination thanks to our uh, what would i say uh, maybe the natural uh, process of getting some in- immunity to covid and thanks to the nature possibly the covid virus which is now um, roaming around is not that virulent but you never know tomorrow some very virulent virus might come up so it will it might cause problem stay in the college in a campus as less time as possible don't loiter for unknown unnecessarily don't crowd in the common room don't crowd crowd in the canteen and i can give a talk on how to make discipline covid appropriate behavior that is unnecessary you know everything but as a as a race we indians are less disciplined and especially bengalis for now i do not know the previous generation they must have been very disciplined otherwise they couldn't have ascend that height they claimed so now try to be disciplined don't crowd in one counter don't get five friends together these are all common sense so you follow those things follow your common sense try to keep yourself as slightly away from others slightly separated and if you have to make gossip just stand somewhere sit in a circle uh, um and then then talk don't keep the your hand on someone's shoulder and just gossip the old style has to be abandoned and just make a different system so that's how we must deal and um, regarding um class and studies i think your teachers are there they are there to guide you covid appropriate behavior everyone knows and if you have not if you haven't yet taken vaccine take vaccine there's hardly any contraindication for vaccinations so these are all common senses which you should follow in your college <clears throat> so that you can remain well you are young your immunity is better than us and your life is much more precious than us you are all potentials you are potential big big shots so this is your grooming period you are very lucky to be in a very good college and this college you know a lot of great people has happened to be your old alumni so try to keep in mind and you have the responsibility to save tomorrow and to lead tomorrow so it is for sure that we are not going to stay in this state the whole thing should improve and i'm sure that uh, if we even been even be unable to see i'm sure there will be a lot of improvement and i have got very very 
uh, high expectations and um, confidence on the upcoming generations. They're intelligent, they're brilliant. But uh, what I find lacking is they're a little less disciplined. They don't follow the nature's norm, which they don't perhaps understand or perhaps their age is such we, we cannot blame them because we do not know or we do not bother to you know look back at our age of 20s. So possibly, uh, but they must be more, much more aware, especially after this pandemic. And after this pandemic, you know, a lot of many such pandemics may come because the global situation has changed. You can see so many volcanoes are erupting the nature, the climate has totally changed. And global warming is dangerous. We are blaming uh, India and other countries for global warming. But see, see the Middle East has turned a battlefield and how much pollution is adding. So we have to see all these things also. The nuclear experiment, how much pollution it adds. International travel by aeroplanes, how much pollution it adds. Nobody bothers to understand that. But that has to be taken into calculations. So how much pollution we actually, I mean, uh, this is a different issue, but since you're young and since this COVID appropriate behavior has come, we must try to look at pollution also, because if you make the globe warm, much more such virus will come. It's a matter of debate how COVID virus has come. Somebody says it's leakage from the lab, some say it's a natural virus, but whatever it is. Tomorrow, some such natural virus can come up if the global warming continues. So we can expect one such pandemic in every decade. Now we have found one such in every century. And if it turns one such in decade, three or four years will be you know, spoiled in every decade. And you can imagine the kind of loss. And despite having that kind of loss, we are not aware. It's a funny thing that we don't learn from history. If you see people, if you see the general behavior, there's a lot of like human. We have lost two years. We have lost about five plus million people, five plus million lives in our country. And don't you think this is a big loss? We don't bother to, you know, keep it in mind. Okay, we have to march. We have to march forward, but we have to keep that account in mind. We cannot afford to lose more. If we do not follow the lessons that COVID has given us, we are going to get more suffering in the future. And the humanity cannot tolerate that. That will be too much. Disastrous. The way the globe is getting warm, the way the water level is rising, you know, the whole biological system is going to change. We are living in a we are living in a living community. That community is not just human being. We have more than ourselves the number of microbes in and on our body. So in that count, we are more a microbe than a human being. And we have got a symbiotic association with these microbes. And for that symbiosis, we are actually living. We are surviving. Overuse of insecticides, overuse of antibiotics, overuse of you know toxins, toxic products to repel bacteria, to be over hygienic, actually is making a very great harm to our health. It is making a lot of bacterial viral strains change their nature, mutating to a much dangerous strain, and a lot of lives getting extinct from the earth. There is a reason for every life. No life has come without reason on this earth. Be it a fish, be it a small ant, or be it a human being. Nothing happens without reason. And if that reasoning is not understood by the most reasonable creature, and just for sake of pleasure, if we destroy the right of living of others, it will be disastrous upon us. We have to pay for it. And that payment will be very, very bad, very difficult. And we are paying. So this is COVID is a warning. We have to learn. I'm talking anything, nothing from the religious sense. I'm talking from science. You can go and look at look at microbiota, human microbiomes, how human microbiomes you know interact with the microbiota outside. 
it's a it's always a symbiotic association we are thriving in if that symbiosis is lost any dysbiosis means disease so if you want to live a good life then you have to have a symbiosis a peaceful existence coexistence with all others not just human beings but with all others some people sometimes say vasudev kutumbakam i don't know whether i am writing i mean rightly spelling it out but it means that they i i heard from a tv lecture that it means that everybody is my relation in this earth so from that kind of you know spirit and that kind of understanding feeling should be born by everyone a small tree is also a life a sapling should be saved unnecessary tearing off a leaf from a tree actually is giving pain to it and and you just imagine if 140 crores of people decide today that we will put one sapling survive and grow every year the whole country will be green in no time and what is the neat effect of it there's a huge oxygen conservation and what is the price of it nobody calculates in kind of dollars and money but it's a huge huge money if you do not suffer if you do not get to hospital that means you are saving what is your most important asset it is your health it is your health i do not know what is character that's a big big issue is a debate i i don't want to discuss it but as a doctor i always feel that my health is my asset and the health of my patient my patients are the assets of my patients and i feel that as a professional it is my responsibility to save their assets that's why i am a doctor that's my duty and if i am successful to do it even to 1% i think my existence is meaningful so talking to all of you all the students all the youngsters is a great opportunity is a great pleasure for me i i i do not go through the common magazines uh, i have not read about covid except for particular special um, areas of my research interest um, i do not know much statistics about covid i maybe might have quoted you something wrong but what i meant to say all together is that you be conscious conscientious and keep your common sense acting all the time with that i think you can do a lot thank you very much thank you madam thank you the teachers and faculty members thank you sir dr mukuti for giving me this opportunity i do not know how much i have served but <laughs> i enjoyed talking thank you thank you indeed sir for making it so making it look so simple and you actually spoke not out of the books but out of the real life ex experiences that you have got and that was very easy to digest from our side actually sir and what you said about common sense but ironically speaking if it were more common in common people we we lack common sense most of the time and maybe that is reason that we are unable to uh, control most of the area so there are some questions that we have uh, if yeah. you may please allow uh, a vice principal sir has asked a question that does a person who has taken two vaccines and suffered from covid-19 infection risk catching the infection again are there any clear empirical indications sir we do not know we it is true that a lot of people have got double vaccine been already given and it is a part of the natural story every person is different we don't have a customized treatment hardly for any for so and we the way we look at our immunity is highly inadequate we do not know much about it covid has actually destroyed the ego of the scientists and the pundits those who used to feel that they know a lot and they teach students means they they can say the right thing and the final thing is absolutely wrong so we do not know and we do not know what can go in future but i can tell you after 10 years covid will give us such a such a platform the humanity will look at its own at its own self from a totally different perspective we must know our body in a much different way and maybe that knowledge will have a different dimensions altogether uh, thank you so much sir so there is another question by one of our colleague dr monalisa basu and she wants to know that if uh, we were vaccinated almost a year before then will flu shots give some protection against covid well uh, there is a um, thought that flu shot can give some protection but uh, i do not know how much but i accept that there is some reasoning some rationality of this thought and from that point of view um what what can i say that uh, i 
I prescribe flu shot to my patients. I think that can, I mean, that may have some role. It has got rational that, uh, but of course, COVID and influenza are different virus. They may have some similarities, but you never know. A lot more research is required unless you have got an answer from the scientist. You cannot say yes or no about it. But flu is also dangerous, especially for those who are elderly, those who have got a cardiorespiratory disease, diabetic, other comorbidities. I think for them, flu shot is a welcome. So there, there are some other questions, Dr. Lee, sir. I would like to club up and uh, put it in Please. front of you. Uh, this is one question is, sir, asymptomatic patients are increasing and how to deal with that situation in college campuses. And number two is, sir, is uh, one surgical, uh, one single surgical mask sufficient enough to protect against COVID? Yeah, it's it's not 100%. The best protection is in 95. And even whatever you put on your face, it will protect to some extent. Some extent, it will protect the spread of the virus. A surgical mask is okay, but it's not the right kind. Best is N95. But if you don't have N95, a cloth mask or a surgical mask, it will do. But what I find that even the surgical mask, there are three layer masks. One layer is almost torn. It is black, dirty, and somebody is, um, I mean, it, it, it is not meant for regular reuse. So I would, I would ask better you buy some or prepare some mask with clothes, at least double layer or three layer, and then use it. It will be better than using surgical mask time and again, repeatedly. And N95 is okay. But that's not foolproof because there are a lot of space here, here. Sometimes your specs get foggy. Uh, critical um, activities are difficult. Visual activities are difficult with these masks. So there are problems. Uh, so there is another colleague of ours which just put up a question. Do we need to take a, mm. a boosted shots? Yeah, I think uh, we have some uh, She's guidelines. Asking about booster shots. Yeah, it's a very if good we question. Require then uh, when? Yeah, we require good uh, booster, like any any other virus, because the immunity is short lasting. Uh, we don't have any. See, for any such uh, thing, there has to be a a guideline, and uh, I'm just awaiting a guideline to come uh, in near future. I expect that it will be coming, maybe coming very soon, for the booster effect and this needs a research also so things are going on people are doing research on it on this front and i'm sure that we'll be getting some uh, instruction or guideline regarding booster uh, shot of uh, covid virus covid vaccine so but if you have a disease it is one way is a natural booster if a patient has had a disease after covid shot it is a natural booster so this this is a good booster dose. So those who have got a, a symptomatic disease even after a single shot or a dual shot, my common sense is that this is a booster dose. If one has got COVID once and you now you are going for a vaccination, you are actually going for booster. So there are some natural boosters and then artificial boosters. And to my mind, natural booster is better. But it doesn't mean that I will welcome because I never know how sick or how bad I can be. I may be just an asymptomatic carrier. I may be a very sick person if I catch COVID. So it is better to be protected myself. Sir, uh, there are some more questions. I hope you don't mind me putting those. Oh, no. yes. uh, sir, there's a question by our faculty member. Uh, do the vaccines have any side effects we need to be aware of? No, vaccine, vaccines are not free of side effects. In fact, uh, there are many kinds of vaccine and many vaccines have got many kinds of side effects. Even only recently, there is a uh, make you and cry about the Pfizer vaccine. And uh, there was, uh, I got it in social media that uh, this vaccine, there was some problem in the monitoring or regulatory issue with this vaccine even. So whatever it is. So, and every individual is different. So there may be side effects. Uh, a lot of patients had fever. Some patients had got COVID just after taking vaccine. A lot of reports came to me, but a lot of panics. Um, 
but uh, overall, by and large, they are fairly well tolerated, and that risk benefit ratio is in favor of benefit. So I do not hold anybody for fear of vaccine for side effects from vaccination, except that if you have got a particular allergy, allergy to the ingredients of the vaccine or the diluent of the vaccine, and that is very, very rare. Or people ask me if I'm sneezing, I'm allergic. Uh, should I go for vaccine? Yes. I'm asthma. Yes. Why not? And I say right, left, and center, go and take vaccines. Because it's proved beyond doubt that if you are vaccinated, I mean, some persons even having vaccination can have a severe disease, but overall, the severity rate has lessened. And that is uh, possibly implicated to vaccine, as experts say. So I have to accept that. So vaccination has to be encouraged, and um, there are hardly any contraindications for vaccines. So there is an interesting question, which is slightly away from our main uh, issue that we are discussing, that what protocol should someone who is a caregiver to a COVID-infected individual follow? If a relative in the same household is infected, how do we ensure that we do not pass the virus to the other people around us? So this is a this is a issue of perception and logistics together. So what is ideal is not real world, and what is real world is not ideal. So you must be as close as ideal as possible to the real world in situ. Uh, the principles should be should be followed. If a patient has got COVID, he should be isolated. He and the caregiver has to be cautious, taking adequate personal protection before giving care. What I would say today, maybe <clears throat> last year, I, I said something different. Today, I would say that if you've got a COVID patient in your household, it is better you test for your COVID antibody if you are to care the patient. If your antibody is strong or you know that you had a COVID, if you're vaccinated or not, if you know, you know that you are vaccinated, then definitely your risk of catching COVID is much less or getting severe disease is much less. So that kind of panic should not be there. And you must be doing just adequate for your patient, not extra. So giving him right food, caring, depending upon the situation, doctors have cared thousands and thousands of patients, sick patients in the hospital. They have suffered most. Despite taking the best of care protection, a lot of doctors have passed away. So it is according to the situation you have to act. If your patient is sick, it is better not keep him at home. If the patient is stable, if the patient is well up and mobile within the household, let him do his own care. Don't go to uh, help him in the toilet. Don't go to his room every time and now. Just give him food. Just give him whatever necessary. Keep him isolated. And whenever you go inside, put your mask on. Coming outside, you must wash your hand. You know the soap, washing hand with soap is the most very, very most efficient kind of protecting. So you wash your hand and <clears throat> keep things separated for him for the time being. So that, and after the patient gets better, maybe after three or four days, you can take him as safe. Then, sir, you say? sir, there is a, a few more questions, but uh, there's one question I would like to just pour to you. That is a uh, second dose at all necessary if it works the same way. There is a question by one of the students, maybe. I don't know. I'm not the right person to answer. But uh, as long as this is uh, recommended, I respect the authority. Those who have recommended it, they must have got adequate evidence to recommend such treatment. And as long as counter evidence doesn't come up, I have to accept that. And sir, your, your deliberation as it was more of uh, like our COVID protocols and our behaviors inside the college campus, and while we are uh, attending the classes, what about, there's a question, what about people, those who will be opting for some PGs or hostels? What different kind of protocols or like what extra protection they are supposed to take? So you have to make your own protocols. Like if you come to my place, what I do, I can tell you. If you come to my place at the very, I mean, entry, I have got a disinfectant spray through which you have to pass. So that is a must, you cannot enter otherwise. And luckily I've got space to give uh, uh, patients to sit uh, with a bit of distance. 
and in my room also i have got a protocol that i keep about 5 feet distance from my patients as far as possible i don't feel that uh, i don't think that without touching patients i can see so i have to go and touch patients and i i'm i keep it uh, certain that the patient has got mask on and my mask is okay i intermittently spray my room consultation room and um, and i take every patient as a potential covid and uh, every day i see i i come across later that that gentleman has come turned out positive that other gentleman the lady turned out positive so i'm sure i am seeing patients who are carrying covid virus to me and um, i take my personal precautions as far as possible um, i what i told that uh, i spray i've got a system of spraying my room almost uh, whenever i find a patient who may be suspicious or intermittently and i keep my common sense always alive if somebody comes close i said please be little away uh, sit there and once i see the patient i have to see the throat i focus a torch from a distance so these are the simple things in your hostel also so you have to find we uh, how they you enter there how where where are the points where there is a chance of crowding maybe in the common room so spray, disinfect the common room and then in the common room you arrange the seating system a little differently keep that windows open so that air passes it's not a close avoid ac that's another very important thing so avoid ac now it's a pleasant climate but in in our uh, state uh, it's humid and hot so ac is very common in household every household everyone is buying ac so ac is dangerous so now for now we can avoid ac and um, keep your windows and doors open so that you have got a cross ventilation uh, these are the things you have to follow once you go to uh, your dining hall don't go together make a routine that say from 8 to 8:30 uh first floor people will go from 8:30 onwards the second floor so you have got a routine i think this kind of discipline is very important and once i see the chinese people follow very strict norm you know kids are like uh, um, following norms as robots i don't mean that we have to be robots but we have a bit of sense of discipline this is a sense of responsibility and it should be customized there is not a formula for everybody so you have to see where you are staying what you are um what are the potential harms what is your um, capacity to which all uh, protection you have got access to one can give a big lecture put an n95 mask but uh, that gentleman cannot buy i had have occasion the patient my patient bought an n95 with 500 rupees i said sorry i i shouldn't have said he said doctor i bought this with 500 rupees i don't have money to pay you fees so it happened to my experience so we have to customize each case accordingly so we are almost at the uh, at the end of the session and there are uh, last two questions and i would no, just like to put it together is that uh, uh, after suffering with covid as you have said at length sir, the, the the functioning of the lungs uh, gets affected and sometimes it's it, it decreases also so what is the way to increase that and uh, does an immune compromised student or a person have to follow any kind of special uh, precaution or procedures while attending college i am giving the answer to the last question first if you are immune compromised for any reason declare yourself immune compromised know yourself first that you are immune compromised pass this information to your authority and i believe the authority should understand it should give you some leverage in your day to day activity and uh, sir i would request you that uh, make some system kind of hybrid thing or whatever so that he is also incorporated in the teaching schedule so that is one and he should follow a little protection extra protection he must be given a little extra i mean privilege maybe a bench separated for immune compromised patients like in um, trains and buses we have got seats for the blind people uh, ladies special seats kind of that should be given to him um uh, he should also be very selective uh, in attending crowd or crowded class or unnecessary he should he shouldn't expose himself he should be very cautious about it and the authority should also look at it that these people are given that privilege they can enjoy that is for the immunocompromised if you, you you must also ask your doctor 
how far I can go, how far immunocompromised I am. There is a degree of immunocompromisation. A diabetic is immunocompromised and a cancer chemotherapy receiving patient is also immunocompromised. The second is dangerous. If he has he or she has got a severe neutropenia and it catches an infection, she or he can die. But a diabetic will suffer, possibly may not die. It, it is not that immunocompromised. If you've got an immunocompromised state, maybe a disease like diabetes, you have to control it, keep it under control. And just maintaining control is, I mean, keeping it control uh, for the time is not important. If you can maintain the control for months together, then your immunity is expected to reach close to normal. Otherwise, I was uncontrolled yesterday and uh, last week, and today I have kept my sugar controlled and I'm immune. That's a wrong perception. That cannot be. It is your status for last six months that actually determines your risk of infections. So that uh, uh, you talk to your doctor and try to get a guideline individually from for yourself. That is also important. And what is the other question? The other question, please. Other question was, sir, uh, that uh, suffering, like when you are uh, suffered, when you have already suffered with COVID, actually, it, it uh, deteriorates your lung. lung, lung yeah, yeah. The function so lungs function. are the most commonly affected organs and um, lungs are the most common route of getting away from this world. So lungs are very important and we find a lot of patients coming to us. In fact, we are trying to do whatever bit of small work on it, how the post-COVID lung problems are um, presenting to us, how they're behaving longitudinally over time and who are actually suffering. There are a lot of scope for research. But I can tell you that uh, those who had severe COVID, they have got predominantly lung infections. Those who had mild COVID, they have got less lung problem. And um, they have got other problems more. And uh, we see a lot of patients with, uh, with the lung being grossly affected, they're short of breath. And luckily, these patients show gradual improvement in most of the time. Most of the people improve, but the improvement may not be 100%. So we are just awaiting to see how these lungs are doing going to do in future. We have taken lessons from the, um, the SARS-1 uh, epidemic um, that happened 15, 20 years, 15, 18 years back. And 5% uh, of the patients have got residual lung problem even after 15 years. So we are expecting a huge number of patients to continue with the lung morbidity after COVID-19. And these patients are going to suffer. Their functional life will be partly or maybe severely geopartized for quite a good number of patients. And um, we do not know what is the impact of that in other uh, systems and other areas of his livelihood. So this is a real important issue. Um, in some patients, uh, some though rare, it progresses even post-COVID lung problem. And in some patients, we have found that it has um, caused uh, exacerbation of other problems. Although we are very scared about, uh, very worried about uh, asthmatics and COPDs, those who are uh, having existing lung problems, they didn't uh, do that bad. They were rather, rather better because the inhalers had protective role. Later, we came to know that the inhalers we used to give them, and they had some anti-COVID role, and possibly that helped them a lot. So, well, uh, the problem is quite big, post-COVID problem or post-COVID, we call it long COVID. That's a huge problem today. And that's an evolving and progressing problem. Uh, only with time we'll be learning. But initially, we had a lot of uh, enthusiasm, a lot of uh, uh, missing um, encouragement on it. Nowadays, things are getting aped down, which is bad. I think we should keep our um, zeal to carry forward uh, our work on it, follow these patients up, and to understand what their problems are. Although they are improving, a lot of them are still suffering a lot. So they should be under follow-up uh, with a doctor. Any COVID, uh, significant COVID problem, any significant COVID problem, be it uh, COVID can cause loss of memory that I have found in not many patients. Significant loss of memory. In fact, I had once or twice uh, suspicion of COVID. I tested myself. I didn't find but uh, <laughs> for next few days, I had certain symptoms which I felt that could be because of COVID. I do not know. 
so hair fall is a big problem that is basically a cosmetic issues um, different systems cardiac cardiovascular system we find patients now they have a heart rate pretty high and still we find in investigations they have got heart muscle dysfunction we do not know how they will behave in future maybe they will have cardiac issues in near or late futures which they would not have had if the if they and suffered from covid so this is in a learning process and certainly a lot of people are going to suffer from post covid sequel which is also very very significant thank you very much sir uh, thank you very much i would request uh, like if there is like any any notices or any announcement principal ma'am is there anything else or then otherwise we can reach towards vote of thanks yes uh, thank you very much for your this insightful uh, that you have delivered with the very uh, i mean uh, extensive and minutely whatever your observations are you have told us uh, you are you have shared with us thank you for that and uh, pinaki i don't have any uh, specific notice at the present but i would like to request all my students to follow the website because whatever uh, we will be communicating with you through the website only so please follow the website regu on regular basis okay thank you so much thank you so much Uh, now it is the time for vote of thanks, and as sir has spoken very candidly, rather I would say, in a very rather in a very informal manner, uh, and uh, the best part about sir's uh, speech that I could understand is that at no point of time we have ever felt that it was a medical jargon. It always felt like some of our senior members, family members, counselling the juniors in the family, and we really would like to thank sir from the core of our heart. in spite of your busy schedule you could find some time to talk to all the faculty members and all the students and very patiently you could hear all our questions and addressed it thank you so much sir but if i have to put your whole uh, deliberation in one line i would just say a better lifestyle can be the best preventive or protective measure against covid i think this is what sir has wanted to say and thank you very much sir for being here with thank us you. thank you we would like to I thank enjoy. our we would like thank you so much sir we would like to thank our secretary college council dr shapun kumar mukudi sir and our respected principal ma'am dr madhuman jiri mondol for jointly conceiving this idea for preparing us before we jump into the pool uh, because in bible there is one term written that if you put your hand on the plow and you look back you are unfit so before we actually jump into the pool let us prepare ourselves so that we can be better caregiver we can be better uh, protective minds thank you so much and i would also like to thank our respected vice principal sir the man behind all the uh, covid protective activities in the in the in the, in the college and for conceiving all this uh, concept all this uh, big kormogando in short term and all the, all the, all the respective faculty members for being attentive for asking questions for listening to sir all the dear students i know they are, they also have so many other activities but they have uh, all throughout they have stayed in this seminar and they have participated they have given so many wonderful insights and thank you everyone for being here and for making this program a wonderful success thank you very much sir thank, thank you dr vatsharya thank you sir thank you thank you for giving the opportunity goodbye goodbye good night good night everyone thank you bye